We see Jamie be such a, a hero and, and all of his capabilities in that, but it's nice to also be able to show that Claire has those two and that um, they are very much equals in their ferocity. There's scavengers going around stealing what they can from the dead bodies and Claire comes across two people who are about to do that to Jamie. And the fierce woman that she is, she picks up a sword and she almost chops their head off. Can it be worth it, all this death? To have that relationship, that ally, to know that someone else has been asking the same questions, someone else is going through the same thing as you, someone else is struggling, it just, you know, it, it lightens the load a little bit and I, and I know that I can confide in Claire. And it just reassures you that what you're doing is, is, the, is the right thing. Because I think on that huge scale, when you're seeing so much death, you're like, am I even helping? Like, is, 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 what, what, why am I here? And so I think that's gonna be a constant struggle for him, but I think that conversation with Claire just reassures him that, yeah, you're, you're doing the right thing. This one is brutal, this episode, in terms of not only is Brianna just, you know, her gut's in absolute knots, not knowing if her child's okay, where he is, if she's gonna see him again, how she let this happen, all of these things are going through her mind, the fact that she can't go and help too, she's gotta to sit with Mandy. Um, but then also now sending Roger back and not knowing if she's ever gonna see Roger again. Why would he do this? It's the gold. Oh, French gold, King Louis gold. It was meant for the Jacobites. It's the only reason Rob would have for taking Jamie, so I think Roger comes to the conclusion that it's financial difficulty because they have the gold musket ball there, and that's detailed as well. All of these things that could be going on, I think Brianna's mind's just at 100, and um, she doesn't know what she's left with. She's kind of just had this huge family, and now there's just her and Mandy, and that might be the rest of her life. So it's heartbreaking, but we'll see what happens. Shoot him, why don't you? The infamous Benedict Arnold appears on the battlefield, maybe slightly intoxicated, uh, and challenges the men of the rebels to, to shoot um, my cousin, Simon Fraser, on the opposing side. Uh, Jamie um, gives it a go, and of course he's a great shot. He could do it, but uh, he sabotages that and aims a little bit to the right. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately that's when he shoots uh, and uh, almost kills his own son, William. Yeah, Jamie gives William his hat because he shot it off. Uh, he shot off my hat. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very important moment, I think, for him because he finally gets to meet his son. But again, I, I don't know who this guy is, you know? I always wonder, you know, if William has this, this feeling of familiarity and he did know um, Jamie for quite a while in his youth. Um, but, you know, as far as he knows right now, this is just some, some rebel that, that is giving his hat back. Um, rebel Horson, I think that's what he calls him. Both Sam and Charles played brilliantly there. It's a really monumental moment, and it really took me by surprise how deep the emotion went there. I believe I owe you a hat, sir. So this scene is interesting because there's obviously been a lot of tension building between them and she really wants to kiss him, but she knows with like every fiber of her body that this is wrong. It's wrong in terms of her faith. It's wrong in terms of the time. Like you don't, you don't be in a tent alone with a man if you're unmarried and all these different things. So like everything in the scene feels very high stakes, but also like that's partly what makes it so fun. You know, she's like, oh, this shouldn't be happening. Um, but that scene was fun to film because it was like, there were so many layers being built in between like, you know, she's very inexperienced with boys, so she wouldn't even really know how to kiss someone. Like she doesn't know anything about that. So she's kind of overwhelmed with a lot of stuff in that scene. And I think you kind of see that with her just being a bit like, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah, it's a really lovely scene. It feels very outlandery. Ian's first kiss with Rachel. Uh... I guess it's that feeling um, a lot of us can relate to of, if I don't do it now, then I'm never gonna do it. Um, and so here goes. Uh, and he may have got slapped for it. You know, it's a little fun, I guess. <laughs> but uh, the, the consequences of uh, dating a Quaker are, are yet to be revealed, but let's just say I don't think it's gonna be 
as easy as, as one might hope. It was very deliberate to pick this, this ship moment as the last moment. We knew we were gonna break the season um, into two. And uh, so we wrote to it to have a nice moment. And, and a lot of times with Outlanders, the fans will, uh, and the audience will know that um, we leave them um, uh, kind of out on the plank, you know, like, oh God, what's gonna happen? And, and I think we wanted to really lead them with a genuine, you know, upbeat moment. We shot very early in the season. Yeah. Like that was actually the first couple weeks. We shot it because we had access to the ship and um, so we yeah. shot that way out of, um, way out of sequence. When Jamie finally sees Scotland, it's a huge moment for him, for the family. They've returned, you know, it's his home. He's a, he's a Highlander through and through. And to see, you know, the mountains there and uh, to know that he'll be home soon at Lallybrock really is uh, such a huge moment and a beautiful way to end the first half of the season.